You're listening to Civic Media. Stay up to date on the latest news and information for your local community and Wisconsin by signing up for our free email newsletter. Visit civicmedia.us slash email to get started. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Former Green Bay Packers star Brett Favre dropped a bombshell during Capitol Hill testimony on his role in a welfare fraud scheme in Mississippi yesterday. Sadly, I also lost an investment in a company that I believed was developing a breakthrough concussion drug I thought would help others. And I'm sure you'll understand why it's too late for me because I've recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's. The doctor at the center of the scandal pleaded guilty to wire fraud in July. Favre denies any wrongdoing. A man from Wisconsin is dead after falling from Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Authorities say 21-year-old Stuart Porter of Eau Claire was rappelling down the rock formation when he fell on Saturday. A climber with Porter was stranded and had to be rescued. Seven people have died while climbing Devil's Tower over more than 100 years of recreational climbing. We used to call it Schwann's, now the owners of Yellow with an O tell Wisconsin workforce officials it's getting out of the frozen food delivery business in November. The company is based in Minnesota. It's been delivering frozen food to homes since 1952. 79 people in Wisconsin will lose their jobs. The company blames problems with staffing and the food supply chain. Small farmers want the next farm bill to safeguard against weather disruptions caused by climate change. Chuck Anderis is with the Michael Fields Agricultural Institute. These practices infiltrate more water and hold more water in the soil and make a huge difference on the amount of water coming off of farm fields. The current farm bill expires in less than a week. Some of Wisconsin's smaller public water systems will share nearly a half million dollars in grants to fight PFAS and manganese pollution. These are systems that have been ineligible for help in the past. The money will go toward new wells, new water treatment systems, or connecting to other public water systems. Wisconsin is getting $3 million for new opioid treatment and recovery services in small towns. Core Treatment Services of Manitowoc will create new access points for services or expand existing access points. The money will also go to collaborate with social workers to make sure communities are getting the services they need. It's Banned Books Week. Peter Bromberg with the group Every Library says more restrictions on reading make banned books more important. Having access to the stories of people who have different cultures, different beliefs, different perspectives, maybe different life experiences, and that builds an understanding and an empathy. That's the necessary grease on the wheels of a democracy in a pluralistic society. More than 100 Wisconsin school districts have had books challenged since 2020. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WRCE News, I'm Joanne Krulotz. COVID-19 is on the rise in Wisconsin. It's been spreading more and more since the end of June, according to the state's wastewater data. Soon you'll be able to order more tests for free. The federal government is reviving its free test by mail program. You'll be able to go to covidtest.gov and order four nasal swab test kits. The program is set to go live late this month, but officials haven't announced a date yet. After 47 years, a southwest Wisconsin business will be closing its doors. The Wisconsin-Iowa Shopping News in Prairie du Chien will cease its print and digital publications and permanently close its operations. The final edition will be October 1st. It was deemed no longer financially viable to continue to operate in a market being served by other media organizations. The closing of the Prairie du Chien location does not affect the Richland Center, Platteville, or Dyersville, Iowa locations of the Shopping News. All three remain open to serve their respective communities. School business official John Bosworth presented information about school finance to the Richland School District Board of Education at Monday night's meeting. The information has been broken down into four presentations. At Monday's meeting, he shared about how equalized value and levy rate and property tax versus state aid. The board will set the tax levy for the Richland School District at the October 28th meeting. Throughout the presentations leading up to that meeting, the board will have the opportunity to gain valuable knowledge in general school finance information. Southwest Cap Head Start programs had been operating on Richland School District property. Southwest Cap continues to operate at the former Jefferson School Building. The district and Southwest Cap have entered into a vendor agreement to provide meals to Southwest Cap through the food service program. The agreement is to provide meals and snacks to the Southwest Cap Head Start program at the former Jefferson School. 
Five outstanding alumni will be honored by the UW-Richland Alumni Association during their fall brunch Saturday, October 5th. Being honored this year are Janet Goplin Kinney from the class of 67. Thomas Tom Simonson was the last class to graduate from Richland County Normal School in the 67. Mary Sue Beth Geek attended UW-Richland where she earned her associate's degree in the spring of 76. Edward Pulvermacher attended UW-Richland, where he graduated in the spring of 79. Jonathan Yancey attended UW-Richland from 2015 to 17. This year's celebration will be held at the Phoenix Center on Saturday, October 5th, with registration at 1030 and the program at 11. Friends and family are encouraged to join in the celebration. Pre-registration is required. The deadline to register is September 26th. Contact Kathy Granger by phone at 608 608- 489-3629. The annual Milk into Cheese Hayride will be held Saturday at 1. The ride will show the emerging fall colors on some of Richland County's scenic rural roads. The Milk into Cheese Hayride is hosted by Ed and Linda Chitwood. The Chitwoods rely on the generosity and support of their friends and neighbors to make Milk into Cheese possible. Free will donations are appreciated and will be used to support the Milk into Cheese program that provides local cheese to local food pantries. Those wishing to participate should arrive in time to be seated on a wagon in time to leave at 1. The Milk and the Cheese Hayride will start near the Chitwoods home, take Birds Creek Valley Drive off Highway 60, and then follow the signs to the staging area. Reservations are not necessary but are appreciated. Reservations can be made by calling 608-537-2340. Be sure to leave a message if you do not get an answer letting the Chitwoods know how many will be in your party. The number for Saturday's Hayride again is 537-2340. And that's what you need to know. I'm Joanne Krulotz. A potential playoff preview looms this week. Hi, I'm Jimmy Cusco with sports, filling in for Mike Clemens. The Milwaukee Brewers are all but locked into the third seed in next month's MLB playoffs. The NL Central champions beat Pittsburgh yesterday 7-2. to Manager Pat Murphy said the Pirates got off to a good start. The Pirates hit some balls really hard today. In the first, like, four innings, they had, like, 12 hard contacts. And uh, we had, like, two. But, you know, we, we grinded out at bats and... Got some hits when we needed to. Willie got some big hits. The Brewers will play the Pirates again this evening. This weekend, Milwaukee takes on the New York Mets in what could be a playoff matchup. Green Bay has won two in a row with backup quarterback Malik Willis at the helm. Coach Matt LaFleur said Willis has picked up the offense quickly. I just cannot articulate the job that he's done in the short period of time. People can't fathom it, I promise you. You guys don't get it. I know you think you got it, but you don't get it. Uh, what he's been able to do is uh, I've, I've never seen something like that. Willis said he has to be prepared if his number is called. And I've had a lot of time to just you know, work hard and just grind every day in order to make use of my next opportunity, which I've been just trying to do this last two weeks. And I think more than anything, you just try to continue to work hard and understand that you don't know when opportunity will come, but you have to be ready for it if you get it. Starting quarterback Jordan Love, who practiced all of last week, has missed two games with an MCL sprain, but could return this week. Kickoff against the Minnesota Vikings is at noon on Sunday. The Milwaukee Bucks are making a, quote, major ownership announcement Thursday morning. Bucks co-owner Jimmy Haslam will be speaking. And former Packers quarterback Brett Favre said during a congressional hearing on welfare reform Tuesday that he has Parkinson's disease. Filling in for Mike Clemens, I'm Jimmy Cusco with Civic Media Sports. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Good news for moviegoers. Just when it looked like people were done leaving the house to see movies, the box office turned itself around this summer and even into the fall. On the heels of an actors and writers strike and a worldwide pandemic, people finally seem to be going back to theaters, which most cinema prognosticators did not see coming. How happy are theater owners? Deadline reports that a group of U.S. and Canadian exhibitors that control almost 70% or over 21,000 movie theater screens in North America have committed $2.2 billion to upgrade their facilities. The National Association of Theater Owners say the funds will be used to upgrade to the latest laser projection technology, sound systems, better seating, food and beverage option upgrades, and family enhancement experiences like arcades and even bowling. In addition to the bells and whistles, cosmetic upgrades in the way of carpeting, better lighting and signage, and air conditioning will also happen. Let's hope the theater experience keeps getting better and never goes away. All of Batman's tangential characters do well with spinoffs. Case in point, HBO saw some big numbers for the premiere of The Penguin, Variety 
Society is reporting 5.3 million viewers in the first four days since being released. That is the most amount of eyes on a Mac show since the premiere of The Last of Us 18 months ago. The show stars Colin Farrell as the title character. In a million years, you'd never recognize him. The story picks up a week after the events of 2022's The Batman, where mob kingpin Carmen Falcone dies and director Matt Reeves says the story will mesh with Batman 3, which he says is all part of his epic crime saga. Speaking of Farrell, the actress says playing the role of the Penguin takes him to some pretty dark places. How dark? The actor says some days after filming, he just sits and watches Pixar movies. To help shake the darkness after long days of shooting, Farrell says he improves his mood by watching the Toy Story films for something light and beautiful. After a tumultuous exit from Taylor Sheridan's Yellowstone, Kevin Costner is hinting at a possible return. According to E! News, Costner said the story is not finished. The 69-year-old actor slammed the producers of the show earlier this year for what he called BS drama. At the time, he said he was focusing on his four-part film, Horizon, an American Saga. Since tearing into Yellowstone, his saga tanked at the box office, forcing part two to only be available on streaming, with parts three and four hanging in the balance. The second half of season five of Yellowstone premieres on the Paramount Network, November 10th. People cannot get enough true crime these days. The series premiere of Ryan Murphy's Netflix series Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story, drew over 12 million viewers on Netflix September 19th and 22nd. Enough eyes found the show to place it ahead of the Jeffrey Dahmer story, Sorry, Jeff. The Rap.com reports that the show also made the top 10 viewing list in 89 countries. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to feel a lot more like summer than fall here for the next several days. Today, sunshine 74 this afternoon. The wind light out of the northwest. Tonight, clear. will drop down to 51. Tomorrow, sunshine 77 on Friday. Partly cloudy with a high near 78. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Right now, it's 48. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 